fill in the role. My name is uh, Tim and uh, I'm doing the video for the district. This title of this session is Stronger Corporate Clubs, Three Ways to Get There. And the description is, does your club have challenges, poor attendance, diminishing membership, difficulty filling meeting roles, lack of fin financial funding from your company, and Lawrence, and Peskov and Kinskorova shall share not only their company knowledge from Aon, but also from district-wide successors and tips to help you improve your corporate club starting tomorrow. Anne is a senior trainer at Aon Corporation. She's a happily married for 25 years and a mother of a wonderful son who is a junior at the University of Nebraska. Anne joined Toastmasters in February of 2010. In July 2010, she was the president of her club and in July 2011, area governor. As area governor, she earned presidential distin distinguished and in October 2012, she earned her DTM designation. Anne's philosophy is you cannot train what you do not know. She pains on completing all 15 advanced communication manuals by working towards her second DTM. She earned her second CC and CL last year and will earn her second ALB and ACB by June of 2013. Anne joined Toastmasters for the speaking skills but has stayed for the leadership and training. The exposure she gained by being an officer for Toastmasters and running multiple contests helped her earn a job position to senior trainer. She believes in the need of strong corporate Toastmasters clubs and wants to share the ex her experience and insights. Ken is a member of the Aon Hewitt Club, 8897901. He has been a member of Toastmasters since 2008. He has achieved his competent communicator award and is close to completing his competent leader award. He is always excited to tell people about Toastmasters. In his free time, he enjoys playing the guitar, the banjo, and ballroom dancing. Ann Lawrence is a director at Aon Hewitt. She finally found Toastmasters in April of 2011. She earned her CC, CL, and ALB in, this time, in that time. She has also worked hard to organize the Aon Hewitt Lincolnshire Club into a successful club. Ann has started her Toastmasters clubs at the Aon Hewitt offices in India, expecting to have three clubs by the end of the calendar year. In Ann's free time, she enjoys spending time with her family, playing piano, and reading. Let's give it up for our three main speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Tim, for stepping in and being our facilitator today. We'll make sure that we work to project our voices for a room we're not on audio from that perspective. We are very excited to be here. This has been a journey. The first TLI that I attended, Ken was there. And Ken pointed out to me that in the schedule, there's never anything about corporate clubs. Many of the clubs that are in Toastmasters in District 30 are corporate clubs. We have challenges. I'm seeing people nodding their heads. Somebody came up to us before we started that there's challenges within their club. What we are here today for is the start of a journey. This is not the end. We want this to be the beginning. We want this to be the beginning of discussions. We want this to be the beginning of networking, and we want this to be the beginning of solving your problems from a corporate club perspective. We do not have all the answers. We have some suggestions. We've interviewed clubs that are within District 30 that are corporate clubs, and we want to make sure that we recognize those clubs. Not only have we talked with our own clubs, which are the Aon clubs at Glenview and Aon Hewitt in Lincolnshire, we also talked with AT&T, Granger, Kraft, Sears, and the clubs that are at UL. There are many other successful clubs that are within our district, and again, we want to continue this to be a discussion. We are using today's presentation as a high-performance leadership project. We will be giving a report out after this session back to the leadership within AN about what we've done on this journey. We also want to thank the area governors and the division governors that we talked to. They provided us much information in terms of clubs that were within their areas or their districts, their divisions, about which clubs are doing really well and which clubs have been struggling. I've always said that you learn a little bit more when things struggle than when they're easy. The tips that we have today are designed for corporate clubs, but they can also be designed for clubs that are not corporate clubs. So we hope that you're able to take this information that we have and, and bring it back to other clubs. We are expecting today to be a discussion. Instead of a question and answer at the end, we will have opportunities within each one of our three areas to be able to have that question and answer period at that point. 
All right, who's excited? All right, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Ann Peckloff. Yes, you have two Anns today presenting, who both work for Ann. I'm going to turn it over to Ann Peckloff, and we have a recording device, so I'm going to move the recording device, and then she will be good.
part of this is I'm going to tell is accomplishing is that I was that person sitting in the cubicle. I was sitting in that cubicle for five years. I was sitting in that cubicle looking at a computer screen, occasionally picking up a phone. What a waste! <laughs> I was like, I, I, I thought, am I going to do this for the rest of my life? I've been in insurance for 30 years, and I've done a lot of things, but now I'm sitting in front of a cubicle. There was no way out. I did not want the job above me. I saw what that person did, and it was ugly. So what was I going to do? I thought, okay, work on myself. Start with the Toastmasters. Just want to mention the Toastmasters because by my taking responsibility, by my working with the management, by my putting together a program, I was able to, when a physician came in for training, I was able to interview for that training, and I was told, point blank, the reason I got that promotion was because of Toastmasters. They said they didn't know who I was before that. Five years of sitting in a cubicle and doing my darndest and working as hard as I could, nobody cared. Few years of Toastmasters, suddenly people know who I am. Corporate sponsorship is important, but corporate clubs are more important. These days, people have to be engaged. They have to have a reason to come to work. They have to have a reason to meet that person on the other side of the wall that they don't meet because they're sitting in the cubicle all day and they don't know anyone. Make it a destination. Make it someplace that people want to come to. They want to have fun. But you know what? You're in a corporate environment. There are a lot of things out there. Find out what you can use. And if you don't know what you can use, go online, find out who the, the corporate companies are in Toastmasters, and ask questions. If you want to start one, ask questions. If you want to get yours better, ask questions. Or you can complete the surveys that we have here, and we're going to continue getting information so that we can help answer those questions and have a forum. Now, that's my part. Now, is there any questions you guys have to be for this portion? We have three parts. So this is my portion of getting a sponsorship and utilizing what the corporation has to offer. Any? I have a question. One question? Yes. I'm Donald Butler at Chicago State University. My question is, listening to you, is it possible that Toastmasters could be a slot in the employment itself by giving back to the company uh, representing as like if I if I come to you and say I I like to work as Toastmasters already in the company but the boss will ask me well how could this help the company well I could be an advertisement of your company to other places and I can also help train and equip your managers and, and challenge uh, your vice presidents of being more effective by using the tool of evaluation, not only in speaking, but in productivity. Can that be done as a form of uh, sponsorship? So you're saying that you're already an employee at the corporation, correct? Are you, you're already, already employed at the, co at the corporation? Want, either already or want to be. Or want to be. Correct. Okay, I've, I've never heard of someone coming in from outside offering those services. I, I, I totally agree and I believe my panelists agree that one of the things we do when we talk for the, to the sponsors and we try to get sponsors is we, a lot of the things you mentioned, we tell them all the benefits of having a Toastmaster mm -hmm. Um, club and how it can help enhance communication. Communication is more important now than it ever has been. And but I don't, I, I have not heard that situation of. Uh, I don't see any reason why you couldn't, but I haven't heard of that of, of someone doing that. So. Well, my the second one is if you already in there, could that be? Enough? That's the second question. Mm -hmm. I, I have not. I, I have no. I, I think you could probably discuss it with the HR and with the training, but it. It has to come from, you know, the corporate corporation has to approve it. I, I haven't heard of that occurring, but I, I can't imagine that it, it couldn't if you had a good enough relationship with the sponsor. Okay. Yes. Uh, and I brought this question up yes. ahead of time. So at, uh, I'm Jill Chapman. I'm with Office Max Postmasters. Uh, and I started at Office Max two years ago. I had already finished my CC, kind of between the different roles um, at the downtown. I went into Office Max and saw that the club 
just seemed to be certain people who had been putting in the same president for yeah. the last eight hundred years, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I'm head of benefits, so I started thinking, okay, what? Why isn't anyone in HR involved? And I, I created, um, trying to get leadership involved by saying, talking about the track for leadership, talking about the communication track, help with sales, all that, and the idea of getting it as part of Office Next University as one of the curriculum items. I've gone through, and then we also were advertising in the E, I'm head of, I'm VP of PR for our club. So we advertised in our e-news, the local e-news, because we're in every state, since it's just a mm -hmm. neighborhood one, beyond downtown, or uh, neighborville. But the challenge I'm having, and so I'm looking around at other people, and I'm hoping you've answered it here, because maybe the, the forum could then you could send us the answers, is when I presented to our, so I got buy-in from one of our large um, business heads of HR, and got buy-in from the head of OD training. And when I went to the EVP of HR, he, he saw the big list of all these employers who have, quote, clubs. He said, yeah, but Jill, how many of those actually pay the $72 a year? Oops, like he was challenging me on saying we pay $72 a year. Um, so that's one of my assignments is how many Companies in the Chicago land, do you actually get reimbursed for your sure. seventy-two dollars a year? Let's do a show of hands. Yeah. So can yes, I see right. that? And could you well, call? And could you charge. call out your companies? You all yeah. state. You all worldwide. Yeah. 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 If they can't won't pay seventy-two bucks a month. Do they have any training budget at all? Mm -hmm. Or seventy-two bucks a year? Wait, what was your company? I see, CBS Caremark. They throw around nickels like manhole covers. <laughs> hey, UL, what? UL, worldwide. We have clubs around the world. Underwriters. Laboratories. Laboratory. Don't forget State Farm and Walgreens out of District 54. State Farm. State Farm's got a number of uh, corporate clubs, and yeah. they are yeah. probably and half of District 54. And so I'd be happy to share the deck I put together to go through this with everybody. It's not like a blanket thing. I wanted to get that. I tried actually to get them to cover anybody anywhere in the company, wherever they were, for any Toastmasters club. Well, and I didn't think, couldn't sell it. Right. I think, I think the reality of the new normal is, and for those of you who have been in business long enough that remember training, yeah, it's yeah. gone. You all give training clerks for every meeting and every speech. Oh my God. So what I was trying to do is what you said, to just say, let's just make it part of it. Um, but I think that's what I'll pitch too. So this is very helpful. And despite the financial pay the chartering fees, but the members pay the dues. And there are clubs that will refund the right. member dues um, once they have complete CC. So there's exactly. lots of different kinds of financial yeah. support that companies will do. And that's what I was talking about, about the fact yeah. about Thank you. that they come in all different colors and shapes and sizes. You come in with your wish list. You know what, you settle for what you have, you meet again in a year. I have to every year present all the awards, all the people who are participating, you know, the contests, you know, everything that happens and the people, and then each year, finally this past year after four years, we got full sponsorship. Before that, it was just as you came in. So you take what you have, what you can. Oh, so I just wanted to say, so what, I was talking to some Ranger people, yes. they also pay for it. And this is the direction I want to go to. It, as long as you can get it part of your IDP, your individual development right. plan, and your supervisor, big, because then what happens? It becomes a local expense. Right, yeah. right. Bear in mind also it's very measurable <laughs> for people with the smart goals. You can do things in terms of how many meetings you attend or how many projects you get done. So if people have smart goals, great. You got numbers. 
And we want you to be in our Aeon so we can work on that because this is actually we're talking about trying to figure out a way of getting connected with smart goals and training and education and we're working on that also. But it's a step by step process yes. and you have to start at you have to start at the beginning. Congratulations. We better get to move on over to Ken. Thank you so very much. We're gonna have <laughs> when companies go through layoffs and have situations where employees, existing employees have increased workloads. What happens from that? Well, the corporate clubs then notice that their membership goes down and the existing members participate less. Now, they come to fewer meetings and if they come to meetings, you find out that they're doing fewer things like giving speeches and doing other things in their leadership and, and uh, communication tracks. So what can the leaders of a corporate club that's going through struggles do? The first thing that leaders should do, and then this is really hard, is stay positive if you can. Don't let yourselves be discouraged. That's hard because if you think about club, or, excuse me, uh, club officers, club officers became officers, why? Well, primarily because they love being in Toastmasters. And they loved being in Toastmasters because they had good experiences. And usually, that's when they were, there was good experiences happened when they were in strong clubs. And, that's, and they want to have that strong club experience for their own members. And when those things happen in corporations, those good experiences aren't happening. And it's very discouraging. So club officers have to do whatever they can to try to look on the bright side and try to stay as positive as possible. While they're doing this, they have to accept two realities. Number one, if a club is going through struggles, there is no quick fix. There is no magical idea that some officer could come up with that would change next, the next meeting from seven members appearing with one uh, prepared speech to 30 members appearing with four prepared speeches. That is not going to happen. As much as you'd like for it to happen, no one is going to have that great idea. The other reality that officers must accept, or will accept, is they're not alone. Many corporate clubs go through those very same struggles, especially in today's economy. So officers in corporate clubs with struggles can't say, well, woe is us, we're doomed, it's, it, it's our club, it's not going to happen, it's, it, nothing good is going to happen again, what can we do? Well, you have to remember that this kind of struggle happens, I hate to say, well, very often. So what can they do? One thing that they absolutely should do if, if their club is going through struggles is reach out. Consult with your area governor. Sometimes this can be hard because, you know what, when you're doing good things and good things are happening, you want the whole world to find out about it. But when your club is having struggles, you know, it's kind of hard to bring it up to other people and say, hey, you know, guess what, we're not doing so well. But don't be afraid to do that. Talk to your area governor. Your area governor knows that this happens to other clubs and could have some very good advice, <coughs> some very good guidance. Or, for example, an area governor can help you with Let's say that your meetings are down to maybe one speech, if you're lucky. Well, an area governor could arrange for you to have guest speakers come in, and that can make your meetings better. Having guest speakers is better than having no speakers, or having a club speaker and a guest speaker is better than having just the club speaker. Also, reach out to people you've met through networking, like here at TLIs and in conferences. So if you've met other people from corporate clubs 
and you're going through struggles, and you, you know, start, you've gotten to know that person, consider reaching out to the person that you've met and say, hey, you know, I know you're in a corporate club. We're having some struggles here. Have you had these kind of struggles, or do you know about these kind of things? Do you know about any ideas that maybe we could use? So remember that you can't solve big problems by going about it alone. You have to think outside of your box and think, how can we use all the resources that we can to help solve our problems? So, uh, any questions or any comments about this? Tim? What do you do about that employee who is active in your Toastmasters club, is laid off, what does he do next? Um, too often what happens is you say your goodbye and you never see that person again and hope that person connects with the club at his or her own company or a community club. Or I mean, is there a way like your corporate club could bring like an outside speaker or maybe an area or division governor say, hey, look, this is not the end of your Toastmasters experience. Check out our community clubs. Is there any way you could do that? Well, I know that when we've had people leave that we always bring up, oh, you know, don't give up on Toastmasters, you know, look for you know, other opportunities with Toastmasters, community clubs, et cetera. But I think you, yeah. Who says they have to leave? I'm currently a member of still CDS Caremark. I'm no longer an employee. Our charter permits it. So I'm still a member there. And they're convenient enough for me, so I still go there every meeting. So I'm, yeah. I, it, assuming it's not an obnoxious commute, yeah. I, I even have to go. My name is Brian Dayton, and I'm the president of JSC Toastmasters North. We also have a companion group called JSC Toastmasters. I advertise us now because although we are not a corporate club, we are a closed club that is built of individuals that are in transition. So we meet, we have a club in Palatine, our club meets in Libertyville, and we are exclusively composed of an organization called the Job Search Circle, that's the JSC, which are 2,000 to 1,500 corporate executives out of work, 2,500 of them. We, that's with Rosemary Monaghan, yes. And so we are very happy to invite those that are unfortunately temporarily in transition to join our group. We are also more than willing to reach out to, if, if you are willing to invite our speakers to come to your organizations to help bolster, to bolster your membership at any time. So I offer that as, as an opportunity to for both members. And so if you want to see me afterwards, please do. But that's, we do not. We do not. Can I give you really nice cards? <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Um, gentleman back there. Yeah, my name is Tony Dark for True Value. Uh, our problem as a corporate group is that officers, we can't get officers. They don't want to run for anything, for president, vice president, anything like that, because they got too much work on their plate, and then trying to juggle work and being a, a, an officer is hard. Do you have any suggestion on how to go and tumble that? Because um, two of our wedding, two people serving two offices in our group right now. And one's president and one's membership, uh, VP of membership. So, and not in PR. But we're having problems trying to be, you know, we got members, but they don't want to participate. They don't want to be an officer. They just want to be a member at large of our, or of our true value, uh, Toastmaster, and that's it. Well, I'll say this. We, when uh, our annual club started, when we had problems a couple of years ago with increased membership, and that even took out some, some officers from our membership, our president <coughs> assigned kind of, in a way, partial officer roles to people. Yes. So to say, you know, can you help out with this aspect of being VPPR? And got the people who weren't necessarily formal officers to pitch in in small ways so that as maybe a greater team, we could get all of that work done. Yes. Thank you. I think some of it might be perception, too, about how much is required of the How much time? Yeah. yeah, how much time is so, saved them? So, the, you know, the communication, Maybe you have some past officers or you talk about how much work is really involved and what you get in return for that work. I mean, if, if you know, 
because we got the president, her last term is now, and then nobody wants to step up for, in June for her position. So I don't know what's going to, what's going to happen after that. So. Uh, we have time for one more comment or question, because I've been to our next speaker, but see your hand. Hi, my name is Barbara, and I'm at Figures and Speech at Granger. And to your question, we have a, we open up our meetings to all members. As a result, we have members waiting in line to be officers. We mentor them, we take them in, in with us to our meetings, they're welcome, they're open officer meetings, they're welcome to attend. As a result, we have members waiting to be officers. So maybe that's how it Before I uh, hand this over, I just want to make one comment. Many clubs go through tough struggles and somehow through work and reaching out are able to survive and thrive. And if your corporate club is going through struggles, your corporate club can be successful too. Just make sure that you reach out, stay positive, make the most of the situation, and remember that things can be better. back here with Ann Hewitt. Our, we did have a handout that had our three tips on it so you could take notes. I've mentioned that now that we're on point three. <laughs> As opposed to the introduction. Uh, so then maybe you have two pieces of notes now. The third topic here is supposed to be about making use of all the programs and practices of TI. You're here, you're at a TLI, you're at an educational session. There's, it's trying to maximize those opportunities for all of your members that can help you and, and can help your organization as well. I'm going to keep my points to more of a bullet point format because I'm very engaged by the question and answers here, and I want to get more to that. So let me cover just a few things quickly. One is the Toastmaster process works. The DCP, the CC, the CLs, it works. If you follow that, it can help your club be successful. We had an example of, of one club and another club where they weren't doing those things and they were less successful because of it. Toastmasters has been around for how long? 88 years, yep. So you may have to explain to your corporation about it because it's different. Our corporation has business resource groups or affinity groups uh, to help our African American colleagues, to help our Latino colleagues, to help our Asian colleagues. And, and Toastmasters fits into a different kind of umbrella. You may have to do some kind of just describing about what it is and how that works. But the Toastmaster process works. Don't reinvent the wheel. The, the area that we're focusing on most within Ann Hewitt right now is we're working to solve business problems. Toastmasters happens to be the answer. I've been working with our offices in India since 2005. We've had communication challenges. We've had communication issues. People are not talking on the phones. Um, some of it is cultural. There's some other things there as well. And I, I had this magical moment where I'm like, wow, I'm in Toastmasters. And I'm having communications issues with India. What could I do? <laughs> I could create clubs in India. <laughs> so think about what are the business problems that you're experiencing? Is there conflict within your organization? Are people being quiet in meetings where they're not talking? Are you ever in an info share with a group and it's whatever, 50 people, 75 people, and only the same three people ask questions? That's a business problem, and Toastmasters can solve it. You can get different people up to the front of the room to present. But Toastmasters can be a solution for your business problems. You, you just may have to think about it in a different way. Those are the, the quick bullet points that I wanted to cover. I want to open it up for question and answer. We have probably about like seven minutes or so, and then we're going to go to a conclusion. So let's go. Hi, I'm Rebecca James. I'm part of the Abbott Toastmasters Club. And currently, our club at Abbott Park, which is around the Waukegan area, is a closed corporate club. I started with an Abbott club in Dallas, Texas, which was an open club. So it happened at an Abbott facility, but they allowed community members to come in as well. Abbott, as you may or may not know from the news, is going through a split at the end of the year. will be two companies, two separate companies, Abbott and AbbVie. And we have the issue that about 60% of our membership is going to be the new AbbVie. Mm -hmm. 
So we're currently going through the process trying to figure out what's happening, we're taking a vote of the membership, whether we're going to continue to be a corporate club where two corporations are in the same club, or if we're going to become an open club. I'd love to hear if any of you are corporate clubs that are open, and issues that have happened, or good things that have happened. So before, you know. yeah, so before people raise their hands, one of the things that I've done was to go through and connect all of our clubs with an AON around the world. I went out to the Toastmasters website and did an advanced search with the word AON in it. And that's how I found about the other clubs. One of them was in Toronto, and they turned out to be an open club. They had a challenge, they didn't have enough people, they made it as an open club. They still have AON in the name. All right. I, I'm, you know how for table topics, I, and I'm sorry, I have swollen. I broke, I think I twisted my Oh no. Yeah, so I've got eyes on it. Um, I'm, I'm doing the table topics where I take the question, I kind of answer what I want to answer. <laughs> Sorry. So I know someone who's uh, part of the split and going to the new company, and I will tell you, coming to Office Max, which was a merger of two companies, Boise and Office Max, it's actually kind of cool, and I can see it with a new developing company, to have people talk about their own businesses as part of their speeches and, and really make the company cohesive. <laughs> and so it might actually, I, I'm just giving you a pro for keeping it closed maybe at the front end because I've been to open ones and there's a lot of, it's a, I love hearing a speech by someone, I'm in HR, I love hearing the speech about um, the losses, you know, and how, how security controls shrink. So it's just an idea. Any other? Oh, yes. I had a question when you, when you brought up about having uh, for resources to bring in guest speakers. But to me, that's like defeats the whole purpose of what the club is all about. If you can't get your members to do speeches, now I can see them coming in to be an evaluator to help you out, but a speaker, I, I'd say shut down your club if people don't want to do a speech. Am I wrong? Well, and I think it can be, it can be cyclical. It's, I, what, what happens what, that I see within our corporate club, it, it's been peaks and valleys. And it's when you get into those valleys that you're doing something to keep, things, to keep things going. It's not a permanent solution, it's a temporary solution to keep things going. Because I think if you stop that club, like if you start canceling meetings, then you're just putting it into a downward spiral and it's going to go. As opposed to you're trying to put some things in place to get that energy back and get it back going up that hill. Okay. So it's more of a temporary. Yes, yeah, my name is uh, Phil Forenzi. I'm also from the Job Search Circle Club. I think one of the challenges we have as a club is in keeping up our membership and sometimes when some of our members land, they land in a corporate club and then they transfer their membership to another club. And then just another comment, if you know of anybody that's laid off from your clubs, feel free to send them to us. We meet in Lake Forest every Tuesday and Palatine every Wednesday when you become a member of the Job Search Circle, you can also join the Job Search Circle Toastmasters Club in each location has their own club and own group. And our weekly meetings at the Job Search Circle, we have 60 to 70 people that attend these meetings on a weekly basis. And John is very instrumental in getting the Toastmasters Clubs started for both of our groups. And I thank John Labby for that as well. Great. All right. Thanks, Phil. Thank so I want to I get a uh, hand. So was, was there any other corporate clubs that are open clubs to help that original question? Well, what, what does open mean? Oh, what so open sense? means that people outside the club may join. May become yeah. members. May, may become as members. As opposed to being, being there because we were about as open as you could be. We had all kinds of speakers. If you need to supplement yeah. your agenda, there are probably lots of people who want to go to the ambassador program or just want to help you out. They'll come in. They will do roles, give you a meeting that you can sell. Because if you have meetings with only a few people there, that's a tough sell. We went through that at CBS Caremark. We got around it by having people visit. And thanks, some of you are here. Thank you. All right, we're going to go one more. Yes. Okay. I want to talk to the gentleman's statement regarding how do you get members it defeats the purpose. The whole purpose of having a guest speaker come in is to help jumpstart their membership into speaking again. Yeah. It's to give them a purpose and to help give them a direction. Not that you want to replace your members. You want to have your members speak first and then your guest speaker. But it's the whole idea is just to kind of jumpstart the club. All right, thank you. And then there was one more, the gentleman in front. Yeah, so I'm Paolo Shosek. I'm a Liberty Voto. Uh, Liberty Vote. 
So our club is open, and I think the best benefit of doing that is we have some more experienced Toastmasters that join and that attend actually from outside our, our club. So they provide a lot more experience to new people and they can learn from that. So if you have a lot of new members in your corporation, then you can lean on that for just more experience. All right, so we are going to have to wrap. We're going to go to our conclusion. But I love the energy that I'm feeling in the room with the questions. Again, we are at the beginning of what I hope are many future discussions around corporate clubs. I'm going to give it over to Ken to do our close. Okay, so we just heard various ideas about how to strengthen your corporate club and how to help your corporate club when it's going through struggles. One common thread that I noticed through all of that was that even though many corporate clubs are closed clubs, the, the leadership of a corporate club can't have a club thrive if they have closed minds. They have to think in terms of, how can I reach out to the corporation to help out? How can I reach out to area governors and other people within the district? How can I make use of the materials uh, and the resources of Toastmasters International instead of doing our own thing? It's been said that no man is an island. So if a club is going to be a strong club, the leadership can't have that club function as an island. It has to reach out and make use of all resources to keep it strong. So that is our presentation about corporate clubs, our first presentation. Our first, first, yes. Because we're going to be doing this again. Yes. In we'll do this in January at the TLI. That's going to be at the Merchandise Mart is our plan. You have two survey forms on your desk on your tables. One is for us to get more information about corporate clubs and then the other one is for the session itself. We got lots of questions, so I don't know, I don't know if we're gonna get kicked out, but <laughs> it's, okay. I, it's kind of for the whole room. I, I don't know if there's anyone who objects, but I would love to get some contact information for other corporate clubs. So I don't know if you were planning on sharing it already, but you know I wrote this down and I forgot to mention it. Um, if we're in corporate, so how many people are on LinkedIn? <laughs> Okay, there is a Chicagoland Toastmasters group. Yes. Okay. Let's use that as our connection point to talk to each other. Okay. To Toastmasters. All right. Pardon? Chicagoland. Is it Chicago? I'm, I'm bad with details. Is it Chicagoland I think that district? Is you'll, yeah, you'll, Chicagoland you'll Toastmasters. It's not hard to find. Okay. Yeah, so let's use that as our communication point to be able to ask questions about the corporate clubs and uh, join that group. Yes. And when you summarize all this wonderful feedback on the surveys, could you post it? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Virginia. Hi, I'm Virginia Bosman. I'm from UL. And I just wanted to offer one other suggestion that a lot of people don't think about. When you talk to human resources and you get their buy-in, if you go to the new employee orientation, yes. tell them about Toastmasters, yes. you've got a brand new person at your company who doesn't know anyone, it's a great way to meet people, they'll come to the awesome. meeting. So yeah, don't yeah. forget about that. Talk to your human resource people and find out what that is and make sure one of your officers goes and does a presentation. It is now 3.30 o'clock and all is well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but I know I, had, I was formerly Sergeant Arms of the district for a number of years. I'd like to thank everybody again for attending this session. Uh, let's give it up and uh, give us our rousing round of applause. <laughs> forms for the TLI and these gentlemen. Please leave the paperwork up here and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much for attending.